Hey, welcome back to YouTube for another shirt video here. I'm going to be unpacking a shirt from the New York Red Bulls today. And it's a shirt that I'm very excited about. I ordered it last week. It just arrived from Fanatics. Love that Fanatics website for um, all the different sports uh, material, paraphernalia, merchandise that um, I, I get over the course that I, that I pick up. And uh, not often buy a lot of football shirts from Fanatics just because um, it, it's a, a website that I focus more of, um, say, North American sports, baseball, uh, NBA, NHL, uh, those kinds of things, usually what I pick up from there. And But uh, I did see a, a New York Red Bulls shirt there that I fancied and uh, picked that up. Now, the Red Bulls, uh, the shirt I'm going to be showing off is a shirt from last season, the 2020 Major League Soccer season. And it's a shirt that I really like, and um, obviously that's why I purchased it. Uh, but I, I really fancied it when I saw it. I uh, saw them wearing it last year, and just now picking one up because uh, I, I saw a good price, so so uh, pulled the trigger on that. Um, the Red Bulls will be wearing some new shirts of this season, which uh, also look very good and uh, are shirts that uh, I'm also interested in, in picking up one of. Uh, but as I've said before here on the YouTube channel in the Football Shirt February videos, uh, I don't often get a lot of Major League Soccer shirts, uh, despite being from the U.S. Uh, and uh, you know, at one time covering it for uh, for websites and and uh, doing a radio spot here in the U.K. Um, every week for Yorkshire Radio um, about Major League Soccer. Um, I just don't get a lot of Major League Soccer shirts, even though I, I do follow it a bit, um, not as much as I used to. Uh, and most of the reason is because the shirts are quite expensive, um, being that Adidas is the kit provider and there's no real competition uh, like you would see, say, in other leagues around the world. Uh, so, for example, in Premier League, you would have um, Adidas, Nike, Puma, uh, and other um, other companies making shirts. Uh, in MLS, you've just got the one shirt centralized, and it's Adidas, and shirts are quite expensive. And in my opinion, they price out fans and you, you keep people from buying shirts and becoming interested in Major League Soccer teams. So uh, I'm going to uh, unpack this shirt now and talk a little bit more about uh, Major League Soccer in general and um, uh, the New York Red Bulls uh, in just a second. So we've got this here, Fanatics, delivered today by Hermes. And just unpacking this. And boy, that looks nice. I haven't, uh, as I said yesterday in a video uh, for the uh, Villarreal shirt, sorry, Villarreal, a uh, Valencia top from the 2017-18 season, um, I haven't bought an Adidas shirt in a while, but I did pick this up, like I said, last week from Fanatics, and like I said, just arrived today, and so this is the first Red Bull shirt that I, or first uh, Adidas top that I've bought now uh, in some time, as you can see there, it's a little bit uh, mesh, uh, mashed up there in the uh, in the packaging. Uh, but you know what? That's a, a really pretty shirt, a really nice shirt, and I'm going to take that out of the Adidas uh, wrapping there. Now, this is the first New York Red Bull shirt I've, um, I've purchased. I've been on a bit of a, um, for the last, I don't know, seven, eight months, been on a bit of a kick um, for uh, shirts for the different Red Bull teams. Um, I'm a fan of um, Salzburg and Leipzig. I'm not necessarily a fan of New York Red Bulls, but I've just been interested in picking up these different shirts from the Red Bull teams. I wouldn't mind getting one from uh, the Brazilian Red Bull team uh, as well. Um, maybe go about doing that at some time soon. Um, but you know, like I said, I'm, I'm interested in uh, all things Red Bull uh, when it comes to football at the moment. And so uh, I wanted to get this shirt. And I do fancy, like I said, uh, one of the shirts for uh, this season, uh, this season's uh, Red Bull team. And this just coming out of the packaging uh, looks glorious. Um, a glorious shirt looks a bit small, I have to say, uh, from eyeing it for an extra large that looks uh, a bit small there. Um, and I'm just gonna hold this uh, around here. And some of that detail is different than um, I expected it to be. Bit stuck there at the back. Okay, and then let's just take a look at that. Uh, it looks a little bit small for an extra large. Like I said, we'll try that on in just a second. But a glorious shirt. It's an all gray top. And we've got some white uh, diagonal striping that goes down the side, which is actually very subtle. I didn't see that uh, online when I picked this up on Fanatics, uh, which is a bit crazy because um, that's very noticeable now that I'm looking at it. And then you've got some uh, more 
dark gray detail splotches. I'm not actually sure if I can make that out, uh, but you can see that there at the bottom. You can see that in the picture. Um, perhaps I'm just, I haven't done my research uh, very well on that to know exactly what that is. Um, but it's quite good, uh, quite good. And then you've got uh, live, fight, passion, glory. So these four words here at the bottom. Hey guys, sorry to break in real quickly, but I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update on this shirt. I talked about those darker gray splotches here uh, in the shirt right there. And the way I was looking at it, I didn't actually realize what it was or what it said. It's literally just those same words that are written right there in red vertically, but they're written di um, horizontally and it's written in a way that it's very subtle and you can't necessarily make it out unless you're really looking at it. So again, it just says love, fight, passion, glory um, in a in a vertical way there or horizontal, I guess I should say the words are, are written up the stomach. So it's a very um, subtle uh, uh it's a very subtle addition to the shirt and it, it's very cool. I like it quite a lot and it just adds to the depth that this New York Red Bulls shirt has because as I told you before, which you cannot see from this picture, and I got this picture from the kit bag website uh, and this picture, you cannot see those diagonal white stripes um, that I talked about uh, in the video, but obviously when you have the shirt up in front of you, you can see it uh, much better. And to be honest, um, in all the pictures that I saw of the shirt before I bought it, I really could not make out what these words said. But now that I know what they are, um, I can see it. It's like looking at one of those pictures, uh, one of those artsy pictures to where you're not sure what it is with all the different geometric shapes. And then all of a sudden you can see a sailboat or, or you know what have you when you really concentrate on what you're looking at. Okay, guys, now back to the proper video. And as I said yesterday in a, sh a shirt video for Valencia, uh, the Valencia top I showed, which was made by Adidas, um, I get bored with Valencia, uh, excuse me, I get bored with Adidas tops, and uh, they I sometimes feel that Adidas tops are very much the same, very similar, and one of the reasons is because they always put, or not always, but often put um, the red stripes, the three stripes, down the sleeves. Now, I actually like this shirt because they put the striping down the side and it's a little bit more subtle and it gives you a little bit more to do with um, the sleeves and as you can see here we've got kind of a two-tone gray uh, from the body of the shirt uh, to the sleeves you've got this um, gray slight v-neck collar uh, but then on the back it's red and white and you've got the course course you got the Adidas logo, you've got the Red Bull uh, tubules and the disc, and then you've got the badge, which isn't sewn on. It feels more like some kind of a plasticky, um, pressed on, ironed on material, but you've got the New York Red Bulls patch, and then you've got two Major League Soccer patches, which these are sewn on, on both sides. And this is just a really nice shirt. I really like this shirt. Um, fantastic. And then you've got the red and white striping uh, around the sleeves. And then in the back, you've got New York Red Bulls. A little bit stuck together there at the bottom. Let's see if I can pull that apart. There we go. Uh, you've got New York Red Bulls. This must have been in packaging uh, in the Fanatics uh, uh, warehouse for a while. Um, and I imagine a lot of people here in the UK picking up too many of these um, shirts. And this is a, a micro mesh, and it feels great. Uh, really nice shirt. Uh, really nice shirt. And then you've got this Adidas tag here telling us that it's a 2019 um top you can't really see it though unless you're looking really really hard now the red bulls uh the new york red bulls that is they'll be wearing a different top this year i believe they've gone back to white uh so uh they'll be going back to white this year rather than this what i think is actually just a great gray color um this was obviously what they wore last season for their home shirt or as mls calls it the primary shirts and so they wore this with red shorts and uh red socks um during the regular season. And like I say, it was a really nice looking shirt. Um, I actually um, uh, saw it for the most part because the MLS was kind of chopped up last season and delayed because of COVID. Um, I actually saw these shirts and kits for the first time really uh, and took real notice of it on FIFA 21 because I didn't get to see um, really any, uh, if any, uh, Red Bull games, New York Red Bull games 
last year on television. Um, so it was on FIFA 21 that I, I really noticed these kits. And um, like I said, this year for the 2021 season, the Red Bulls are going to go back to a white uh, shirt, red shorts, and I'm guessing white sock combo. Uh, and the shirts are a little bit different. They have like uh, checks, Adidas, again, Adidas making it. Um, and the newer shirts are uh, with checks across it rather than this um, striping. But, you know, I've said in previous videos talking about RB Leipzig and Red Bull Salzburg that the the Red Bull owned teams are really trying to differentiate themselves from one another uh, with their kits because there was a time when you could look at say uh, Salzburg and Leipzig and they basically had the same kits they were twinned um, with their kits and if you if you were a fan and you wanted to say support both teams you had no uh, no reason to buy buy both shirts you could buy one of them and they look the same the only difference was the badge with uh one name changed really for the most part so there was really no incentive but now as you see the teams are changing i've shown off some different shirts this season or sorry over the last couple months um of the red bull team so we've got new york red bulls we've got rb leipzig and we've got Red Bull Salzburg. So these are the three shirts for the 2020, uh, excuse me, the 2020, 2021 season. Obviously, Major League Soccer runs from spring to autumn rather than autumn to spring. So, um, but the point is that we're seeing some differentiation. Uh, Red Bull wanting to do something a little bit different, uh, or at least uh, the kit providers, the kit manufacturers, uh, and, and the club together, they want to dif differentiate these teams from one another and doing it by making some separate kits. We're seeing a lot more red uh, in the Red Bull Salzburg kits um, this season and last season. Uh, we're still seeing a lot of white uh, within the Leipzig kits. And then uh, Adidas and New York Red Bulls uh, are just trying to do something a little bit different than those two teams. Obviously, it's a different kit manufacturer, and uh, they're just trying to do something a little bit um, more to catch on with fans in uh, in Major League Soccer and in the U.S. in general. Now, as I said, I grew up in the U.S. As I said, I grew up in the U.S. Um, and then uh, moved uh, to some different places around the world uh, and ended up here in the U.K. Uh, eight years ago, eight years ago, um, full time. And um, growing up in the U.S., um, I grew up in the U.S. during the 90s. I was a teenager uh, during the late 90s, uh, early 2000s. And I can remember Major League Soccer at the time. Um, nobody followed it. Nobody knew about it. Nobody cared. Um, now, Major League Soccer is uh, it's a thing. It's uh, supported. Uh, the teams are supported, I should say, uh, by soccer fans in the U.S., uh, even though I think that a lot of it is casual fans, uh, the hardcore fan base is very small, while the casual fan base is high, who could take it or leave it from a daily basis. And, you know, that's that's kind of the landscape, uh, in my opinion. Um, but I remember growing up in the U.S., and um, at the time, when Major League Soccer debuted in, two, uh, in 1996, you had not the New York Red Bulls, obviously, uh, Red Bull wasn't really a thing in the U.S. I don't ever remember Red Bull probably until uh, I was at university in the 2000s. Um, but uh, in the U.S., um, the New York team, the original New York team, which is now the Red Bulls, they were known as the New York, New Jersey Metro Stars, which is a play on the Cosmos uh, from the you know, 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, it's kind of a play on uh, New York being this huge you know, Megatropolis. It's a play on um, the New York Mets as well, my favorite baseball team. And, you know, we had the New York uh, Metro Stars, New York, New Jersey Metro Stars, I should say. And, you know, they, they weren't anything special um, during that time. It was, I guess, you know, it was hard for them to grow a fan base. Um, they played their games at Giant Stadium, the big NFL stadium that was there at the time, which there's a brand new one now, but uh, the original Giants Stadium uh, in New Jersey. Um, so they didn't actually play in New York City. Uh, they played over the border in New Jersey. And so the Metro Stars, you know, they, they had a hard time 
really carving out a niche. Um, they later changed their name, dropping off the New York and New Jersey part to just Metro Stars. Um, again, still struggling to carve out a niche, niche. And it really wasn't until Red Bull bought the team that they were able to do that. But that also kind of coincided with Beckham going to the U.S. and, you know, a lot more interest in soccer from people in the U.S., whether it be casual fans or uh, non-casual fans. Now, I was thinking about this earlier when, I, when this when this shirt arrived, and you know, I'd love to have some of those early MLS shirts. And there's a lot of, uh, I won't say a lot, there's teams now such as uh, Kansas City, who I've, I've shown some shirts of before, uh, Spring Kansas City, that is, as well as this season, the LA Galaxy, going back to... Uh, or, or having shirts produced that are, are based on shirts from 20 years ago, 25 years ago. And those shirts are, are pretty cool to look at. Now, I'm, the LA Galaxy shirt from this season is a, is a, a callback to, I'm guessing, I think it's the, the late 90s or, or early 2000s, before Beckham arrived in 2007, obviously, when they changed their kits and colors to white and gold and blue, um, a little bit more uh, in line with Real Madrid. But... Those shirts that um, I was thinking that those shirts from those old days in Major League Soccer, man, I'd love to get my hands on some of those. And there are some websites that have some of those shirts that have surfaced and they're selling for, you know, 200 pounds or 300 pounds. But there are probably um, some, some thrift stores in the U.S. where you could find some of these shirts, but at the same time, I don't think there's a lot of those shirts that actually exist anymore um, for two reasons. I don't think a lot of people bought them. And I also just think that if people did, they probably discarded them, uh, you know, after a few years, probably because, you know, their interest in uh, soccer at the end of the 90s um, dipped. Um, there was, you know, that high of the 94 World Cup when I saw my first proper uh, professional soccer match as a kid and my interest you know peaked and then we had major league soccer show up in 96 and then as we got to the end of the 90s and into the 2000s things started to decline but then you had world cup night uh, 2002 where the u.s did very well and then that interest went back up and then things kind of went down and went back up and that's just kind of the cycle of soccer in the u.s um but like i say i i, I wouldn't i'd love to get my hands on some of those shirts from back then, uh, from the 90s. And I do have, I will say, I do have one, which I've shown uh, before here on the channel. And that is a shirt from the inaugural season, 1996, Kansas City Wiz, who became the Kansas City Wizards after that, and now are sporting Kansas City. Uh, and I got this, um, not because I bought it, but because my, uh, my best friend uh, in the US, he, uh, also a, a big soccer fan, or at least he was in, in the 90s, uh, and he played. And he went to perhaps perhaps their first game, uh, perhaps their first game in history, that is, uh, or, or at least one of their first games, and he picked this up. He bought this, and uh, a few years later on, when his, his interest waned, uh, he gave it to me. Um, it's still got some stains and some spots on it, because he probably wore it for um, uh, you know training sessions uh, for his teams. Uh, for for his uh, grassroots teams uh, when we were in school, but um, I'd love to get my hands on some of these shirts. But again, I just don't think that a lot of them exist. Now, this doesn't have a lot to do with the shirt I showed off earlier, uh, the New York Red Bull shirt um, from the 2019 sorry from the 2019-20 uh, MLS season. But I digress. Um, pulling that back out. I guess my point of the whole thing is. Major League Soccer has come a long way, and in my opinion, it still has a long way to go. Uh, I still think that there's a lot of um, casual fan uh, base to it, and um, there are a lot of things that I would love to change about the league to to make me more interested and possibly to make other fans more interested. But um, the 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 point is that um, you know things have changed a lot um, over the years, and we're seeing. You know, some of these nice shirts show up, but, um, you know, I'd love to get my hands on some of those old shirts that uh, probably don't exist anymore. Um, but, yeah, so this is a, so 
So I'm going to be rocking this shirt, uh, probably not today, probably actually save it for a day or two because I actually really like it. I want to try it on though because it does look a little bit small and I'll let you know how it fits maybe uh, another time. We're running a little bit long on this video, but um, yeah, this is a great shirt. Uh, at least it looks great and um, yeah, picked it up from Fanatics because uh, they had it on sale and uh, yeah, just loving it. So um, that's, that's it for today, guys. Uh, if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. Uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel, that is, and leave, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this New York Red Bull shirt and what you think of, you know, Major League Soccer's kits. Uh, they're getting ready to start their new season in April. Um, a lot of new kits have just come out, a lot of good-looking ones, uh, I will say. And, um, you know, let me know what you think about maybe some of those old kits from back in the 90s. Uh, and if you have one and you want to get rid of one, you know, let me know. So, guys, I'll see you soon, and, uh, yeah, have a great day.